All right, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is we're going to need to add a resource file. So by adding a resource file to our project, we'll be able to reference that and utilize that uh, so that we can, we can begin our uh, process of reading data in from this file or turning around and writing data to this file. Um, so we'll need that. Let's go ahead and add a resource file in here. Now to do that, the easiest way to do it is to simply uh, right click on resource files, hit add, new item, or you can use the, the shortcut control shift A and that will get you there as well. Okay, control shift A, here we go. Now we have this very familiar uh, menu and now usually this is where we'd add our CPP file and stuff like that, but we're not, we're not doing that here. What we're after is actually underneath the utility section. We're after the uh, text file, .txt. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna name this. We're gonna give this a file name, uh, some sort of name, something that'll be relevant. It is case sensitive, so you wanna keep that in mind. This will be case sensitive. So whatever you name this, you're, you're stuck with that name. You have to reference exactly that name in that case. Uh, so I'm gonna call this just something generic just for uh, this example here. We're gonna need to uh, call this data.txt. Okay, so data.txt, I'm gonna go ahead then and hit add. So now I have data.txt, which is just a text file, loaded in my project underneath resource files. Cool, so now I see two tabs are here. I have data.txt, which has nothing in it. And then I have my source file, source.cpp. I wanna make sure that source.cpp is selected. This is the one that we're working out of. I don't have this data.txt uh, uh, selected. All right, so let's type uh, our program up real quick. We need to include iostream. We'll be needing to use some of that functionality. We're also gonna need something else. Uh, this is going to be a little bit new for us, uh, but we're used to it. Include, and we need to include the ability to use all the file stream properties. So in order to do that, we're going to type f stream. Okay. It's just short for file stream. So anytime we use anything for uh, files, we need to include this library in C++ so we can use it. Um, that's only if we're using f stream. All right, using namespace std, cool. Now I'm gonna create my main function in main. All right. Okay, got a pretty decent shell here and uh, I'll go ahead and start populating some of this uh, here out with some content. So let's, uh, let's get to it. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and um, create a variable that will allow us to reference our file. So this is, this is something that you might have been wondering up until this point, um, or perhaps you already knew, um, but if you didn't, let me uh, key in on something. So whenever you type something like string, right? You type string and then you give the uh, data type uh, a name and all that, you give it an identifier. <clears throat> You notice that string looks different from int, doesn't it? This lights up blue, this lights up this, uh, this kind of this light green. So why is it different? They both are, are uh, data types. What makes this one different? And this is going to be uh, probably our first look into something called an abstract data type. Think of it kind of like this. I'm gonna break this down into a very uh, short analogy uh, right now and then you'll be able to fill in the more technical um, portions once the content is uh, unlocked for you. So think of it like this for now. You have the ability to use uh, data types um, or create data types that will feature a bunch of primitive data types. So a combination of primitive data types underneath it can make up this almost, well, so to speak, super data type. So what is the string? Well, the string is just simply a series of characters. It's a bunch of characters. It's an entire collection of characters. What's well, a character? A character is a char. So you have a string, you have a char. String is simply just a collection of these here. So. That's a very you know, basic way to explain this, and um, beyond that, 
what you're going to start doing is you're going to start treating you're going to start treating these the, your code and all of these these small snippets that you create you might be creating them with the idea of, of making them this full-fledged structure maybe this uh, this uh, this object if you will so kind of consider this uh, another another sort of analogy here say you have uh, bought a little toy robot can you open the robot out of the package and it's voice activated so you pop some batteries in it and you set it down and then the robot you say robot move move forward and the robot will march forward a few steps robot move backward and we'll move backward a few steps so what are what are you doing well you're 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 addressing the that object the robot and you're calling it by name you're saying robot go do this and then it has built-in functionality it has a built-in function that says move and in what direction so kind of more or less what you're doing is you're saying robot and then what you're saying is you're saying move where forward and so what you're doing is you're addressing the object you're saying go within yourself and find this function and pass it this argument and go uh, go do that so little abstract but watch this let's do this first so let me kind of kind of back up here um, I'm gonna create a variable in which will allow me to store a reference of this uh, this data txt reference file um, so uh, I'll have that reference uh, let's do this now. I'm going to start off by writing data to a file uh, So I'm going to start off with of stream There's gonna be two that we talked about one for output one for input So of stream simply stands for output file stream then we need to give this a name and I'm not clever, so I'm gonna call this out file uh, So just out file this is pretty standard textbook I think they use this but this is just a name you can call this whatever Whatever you want does not matter. Um, just make it make sense. That's all I ask of you. So output stream out file. Now what we can do is we have a variable. Now this variable, this data type, will store of type reference to a uh, file. So we can store a reference to data.txt. Here's how we'll do that. We'll say out file dot open. Open is a function that will take inside of it an argument parameter that is of type string. Uh, what is that string? It is the file. All right, so take a look at this. This now is a function. You're calling a function within this, this object, so to speak here, that uh, will allow it to perform an, uh, an action, a behavior, and here's the argument. So it's kind of like what we have here in our analogy, our robot analogy here, is not too far off. So if that helped you, cool, great. Um, we'll continue more on this later. I know this syntax looks a little weird. You now are using this dot uh, in between these two things here. I mean, this right here clearly is a function. This is a function call. And then this clearly is the identifier of a uh, variable here. Um, so this dot operator, once we have a structure, this advanced data type here, this abstract data type, um, in this abstract data type, we now can reference behaviors that are programmed within it. Now, I know that's a lot to take in, um, and I know that it might still seem a little fuzzy uh, until you get to the subject of structs and classes. As soon as you hit those two subjects in C++, this will be made very, very clear as to why this is. But for now, uh, sadly, this is uh, what we have to go off of. This is uh, this is going to be use this because it opens the file. Um, so if you can trust me with that uh, and keep that in mind, keep it in the back of your head, once you cross that bridge and you get into uh, object-oriented programming, this is going to start lining up and making a lot more sense. Okay, so think of this as instruction manual for now, and then later on you'll be the one in charge of how this data is represented. So that'd be cool. 
All right, so output file, output file dot open. This is how we open a file and how we link this data file to this variable. So now it's open. The resource is wired, it's ready to go. All right, so F stream and IO stream. Believe it or not, but these guys here share a lot of commonality between the two of them. Um, they are very similar in their structure. So the good news is, is that when doing this, it's going to be very, uh, very easy to catch on because the way that you see out, console out, uh, so that things can be seen in, in, uh, on the console window, is the exact same way that you're going to use fstream to write to a file. So now that we have data.txt open, this is normally uh, the statement that we would write. Uh, we would put, this is a test, okay? We'll write, a, we'll write an end line to this here. Now this is what we would normally put if we're wanting to print out to the console. Uh, but we're not, we're actually wanting to write out to this file. Okay, so we're wanting to write out to the file. How can I write out to the file? Uh, well, all we have to do is take the identifier out file and use it. Forgot my capital there, so out file, and then look at that, it looks exactly like C out, exactly like C out. So that's cool. Um, all we need to do from here is a, a little bit of cleanup. Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys in saying that uh, this next step that I'm about to perform technically is done automatically for you when the program closes. But I wanna issue this very, very stiff warning um, in saying don't rely on automated automatic processes uh, in order to handle resources for you. They can fail sometimes. Uh, so be mindful of when you're putting things in memory and things like that. Just to kind of go back into days of old, um, when we played uh, uh, certain games, maybe let's, let's go back to classic here. Classic GoldenEye for Nintendo 64. Great game, right? Everyone loved the multiplayer, and it's still kind of revered among gamers as like one of the early roots of great uh, multiplayer shooter style game. Um, <clears throat> notice that in that game, or maybe even other games that you might have played in the past that are eh, pretty dated now, uh, those games, whenever you would kill an enemy, the enemy would hit the floor, and then they would despawn. They would just go invisible and disappear. Why did they do that? Why did they have to do that? Well, guess what? When those enemies die, even though they're on the floor and they're not moving, they still are being uh, uh, rendered. They're still consuming the exact same amount of resources, perhaps, um, as they were alive, as they are dead. Because the, it's just the same thing. This is just a different art representation state. Uh, they still have all the functionality bound with them. They just may not be actively using some parts of it. So, um, because this, the, those resources that it takes to actually render all of the, those, those enemies, um, it, 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 it stacks up. It costs a lot. So, instead, what they do is they have to despawn these and deallocate them out of memory so that they have available system resources to spawn more. Now, the good news is, is that computing is just because of Moore's Law and things uh, and bad things in, in technology, we're getting better and better hardware, and that's really not an issue anymore um, for the most part, um, but uh, it, it, it still is something that we consciously try to navigate around in the gaming industry, um, where resources are still the thing that we try to push the envelope on. We try to, um, we, we really try to have the highest fidelity uh, uh, graphics and, and rendering and things like that, and sadly, it's just, it costs so much to do uh, certain things and we have to only uh, operate in some confined space. So we despawned enemies because they, they cost a lot of resources and we have to, if we create them, then we have to be very uh, resourceful and, and get rid of them so that we can spawn new ones because if there's too many uh, as a possibility on screen at once, the program could bloat, um, the file could, or the program could crash, the game could crash. Uh, we don't want that. So here's my, uh, uh, I guess my, with great power comes great responsibility speech. If we open a file and we create a reference and we create this, this link in memory, 
with this, we need to turn around and we need to get rid of it and close it when we're done. Yes, this will happen automatically in this example, so don't send me an email on that uh, telling me that. Um, I want to just get you in a good habit of being conscious of what it is that you're doing with memory. Okay, so here's how we're going to close this. We're gonna just type the name of our file, which is out file. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna type dot close. Now close is a function that is uh, within fstream. Um, close just simply says whatever reference is bound to this identifier here. I want you to then turn around and break that reference, close it, get it, get rid of it, it's done, close it up, no more, no more, I don't need it. Uh, you do not have to pass an argument to data.txt, why? Well, because it's like, well, whatever's there, I don't care what's there, just close it. So it doesn't actually need to know what it is, uh, it, you just issue the command, close it, it doesn't matter. All right, so with this here, I think we're ready, I think we're ready, well, let's see where we're at. I'm going to go ahead and run this uh, program here. Okay, um, I don't actually know if I can show this on my uh, stream here. So yeah, I don't know if I can actually show this on my stream, but let me see. Um, I think this should be seen. Yeah, we could we could still see this. Cool. You won't see my, my little dialog box come up here, my, my uh, black console window uh, here. That's not, that's not being on the screen capture, but, but don't worry. So uh, look at this right here. All I did was hit uh, start without debugging and run, and then I'm gonna look over my data.txt file. Look at that. I did not type that up there. Just to prove it, I will erase it. Save it, come back here, and type something else. Okay, I'm gonna run this here. My dialog box comes up, I close it. Now I'm gonna go over to my data file. Aha, there it is, something else. It's not magic. All right, so this is cool. Um, it's It seems like it's potentially useful, perhaps. Um, maybe something that we can grasp a little bit better. Well, I kind of mentioned the gaming thing, and to be honest with you, those that's my roots here. Uh, I'm very actively in the gaming industry. Uh, my, my daily job, so uh, a lot of my references come from, from that. So if we can follow maybe some of the, the cracks that I was kind of laying out there before and try to figure out how we can navigate around some of this stuff, well, if we have, say, a player, uh, and that player has data associated with it, um, let's, let's see what this would be like. Let's say the string is going to be used and we need a player name. Um, maybe the player has a health. Uh, wow. Health uh, pool, and the player is going to have a uh, level. Okay, so we'll say that this is all of our player data. All right, um, now technically I should be okay without including string, but I'm gonna go ahead and pop it up there. Uh, string, player name, cool. Uh, int health, int level. All right, now what I wanna do is I wanna save all of that data out to a text file, okay? So here's, here's what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go ahead and say out file. Then I'm going to have the stream extraction, or uh, insertion operator, so stream insertion operator. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the values of what it is that I want saved. So I'm gonna use this data file, and I'm gonna store, I use the end line in here because I want it only to have one variable on, uh, on each line. It's just my personal choice. I don't technically have to, but I'm going to. All right, so player name, end line. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, all right, out file, uh, where we had player name. Now let's say the health pools, that's next in line. The order is determined by me, uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it in the same order as I have it declared. Okay. All right. So uh, here's what I'll do. I'll say uh, let's let's create real quick. Uh, a, I'm gonna do a get line for 
uh, the player name. All right, and then everything else will we'll just say starts at uh, starts at default. This will start at 100, and we're level one. Yay! So we have uh, a stick and probably some old rags for for armor. Uh, yay us! All right, so now get line, player name, health, level. We're going to store all these values. This will always store 100. This will always store 1 unless we change it up here. And then player name, we're going to get this from the user. Uh, just, oh, you won't see that anyway, so I'm not even going to waste my time. All right, so I'm going to run this here. Again, there's nothing. Now there's nothing in uh, our data file. It didn't matter even if I left that in there. It's going to overwrite it no matter what. All right, data.txt. Okay, run this here. Okay, and now it's uh, the dialog is pro pro popped up for me, and I'm, it's prompted for my name. I'm gonna do Tim Pryor, which is my first and last name. Uh, you didn't see me enter that, but I did enter that. Now I'm gonna go over to the data text file. There it is, and I have 100 health, and my level is one. Yay me! All right, so this is here. Let's talk about reading in. Uh, some input so follow along with me on this so here's the input side um, now I'm gonna kind of break protocol here what I mean by breaking protocol is I'm going to do the input section all together now the input section the only reason why I'm saying break pro protocol is I'm gonna declare a variable in line here I always like the variables declared at the top of the function um, it, it's just the way that it's done when somebody is reviewing code they can look at this and they can say aha all of my um, all of my variables that are in play right now are all up at the top so as I'm going to read the functionality of this code I know everything that's in play all right so this is really kind of why these are these are up at the top plus two uh, not to mention that when you declare them in line there is a possibility that something might be using that variable before it's even declared um, because you've simply forgot where the order is that they're declared in and uh, we could have an issue where cart, cart is before the horse. There's a few others as well, but that's, that's just a start. So here's the input section. Uh, so input section, I'm going to now switch over to input. Now where we had OF stream before, this is IF stream. Okay. Uh, I'm going to call this in file. Uh, it kind of matches what we had up here, out file. All right, so I have stream in file, and then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have in file dot, dot open. I have to create the reference to this file. Once again, uh, it's, this is a completely different variable now. Okay, so in file dot open, and this takes as argument of type string. What is that string? That is the file that we wish to link it to. All right, in file data dot txt done. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to store uh, this data. I need to store this data into uh, some, some variables and stuff like that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create just some, some uh, variables. And I'll have string uh, a, yeah, 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 uh, int h and int l. So I'm going to forget. All right, none of these have any values whatsoever, okay? None of them have any values. Uh, so now all my variables are declared. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, open the file, which I've done. Now I'm going to read in from the file. Now, how is this going to happen? Inside of the uh, lecture on Blackboard, uh, what I've done is I've placed uh, a chart that shows you the read position. So how it's going to start is it's going to open up the file. It's going to start at the read position, which is the beginning of the file. What it's going to do is it's going to go and capture all the way until a white space. Okay, it's going to capture all the way until a white space. So is my question for myself here, uh, here hypothetically, is since I have a string here, um, a string is capable of storing this whole thing, but is it actually going to store the entire first name and last name, or is it going to stop right at this white space? To be continued, we'll see what the happens. And then once it stops, the next thing in line is uh, an int here, which is health, and then another int, which is uh, going to be um, the, uh, 
level, right? So theoretically what we're gonna be doing is we're, every time that we say go read in from the file, it's gonna read something in, and then an invisible marker, kind of like, here, I'll blow this up here, kind of like this blinking cursor right here, an invisible marker is marking where my current uh, read position is. So the next time I say read in from the file, then it's gonna read in the next thing that's available. And then it remembers where it left off. And then I say read in again, and then it's going to begin where it left off. Read in again, it's gonna remember where it left off and continue until it hits the end of file. There's an invisible marker at the very end of this file that denotes that, hey, this is the end of file. All right, so um, here's what we can do now. Uh, since we have this open, we can now read in from this. Now, looks like uh, with output file, it, it's the same thing as C out. Okay, so if it's input, is it possibly the same thing as C in? Oh uh, yeah, so let's let's look at this. So string A, we have string A is a what we want to read into, right? So what if we did um, in file, and then we did the stream extraction operator here, and then we did A. So read in the first thing into A. Okay, let's keep going with this read into H and then we'll read into uh, L. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn around and I'm going to print C out statements. And I'll say name is uh, equivalent to, and type this out as well, follow along with me, uh, so that way you can actually see the output of this, because uh, you will not be able to see it on mine. Um, but name is going to be what? going to be a okay and then we'll have that printed out there okay then we're gonna have uh, help okay we'll have health printed out and that's gonna be H okay whoa my microphone is I don't know why but just the proximity of it close to my keyboard is a uh, cause me to foul up here all right, so name, health, and uh, level. Uh, keep consistent with my style here. L. All right, Ciota. There we go. All right, so printing out one, two, three. There we go. So basically, we're going to see if it actually reads it in. So this is a test. This is a test to see is this actually going to be read in. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask, uh, just, just do this. Uh, let's, let's, con let's actually comment out all, all of this up here, uh, just for the time being. So we don't get confused of why things are happening. Um, so let's make sure that all of this is commented out all the way down to the input section. I don't want us to get confused with stuff that's happening up here. All right. So make sure that that is done. All right, let's go ahead and do this. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit go. I have no idea what's going to happen. All right, so I've run this here and in my, in, my, um, in, in my console window, my name comes through only as Tim. It does not get my last name. And because then it doesn't get my last name, health and level are all screwed up. These two have these crazy random uh, long negative numbers. And that just tells me right off that, hey, this stopped reading um, in unintentionally here. And then this was tried uh, to be stored into the integers. And that's why it's just, it's all kinds of wonky. All right, so this is where students tend to experiment. And I, I wanna show you what's commonly done or found after a series of back and forth in, in logical deduction here. So. We see like, all right, this is the same thing as CN. I know whenever I'm dealing with a string that has a white space character, that white space is kind of evil because what it says is it says, hey, stop, uh, stop reading in at this point here. And it, it, it sees it as a terminating uh, uh, character here. So we have to use this get line function 
because that says, hey, no, 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 no. Don't, don't stop reading in when you see a white space. Keep on going. Now, getLine is a function that takes this argument, the operation or the object to be performed, and the variable name here. What if, what if, because this is very much like cn, what if you did get line, but instead you did in file here where cn would normally go, and then you add a here. What would happen? I'm going to erase that here just so that we can test this out. So we're going to run this, because this is where students typically go, and run this. What did you get? Well, uh, to go ahead and spoil the fun here of what you got, you got a perfectly working program. Um, now it is capturing the entire string, the health, the level, everything is being captured perfectly, perfectly. Look inside of your data file, there it is, there's the data. So all of this data that was stored because of this is now being read in because of this. All right, so that's awesome and that's fascinating. And if that's not fascinating and it doesn't excite you, check your pulse because uh, I, don't, I don't know what else I can do for you. This makes a lot of our gaming concepts uh, possible now. Let's do this real quick. Let's write a function. I'm going to write this function uh, and I'm going to call this uh, save uh, data because that's what I want to call it. Uh, this is going to return of type um, nothing for right now. This is not going to return anything. Okay, save data. What is save data going to do? Save data is going to take some data in and it's going to write it out to a file. Uh, what would I need to save? Probably these three things, right? I need a string, an int, and an int. So I need a string n, int h, and int l. All right. So, um, if I wanted to do all of this, I could basically take all of the functionality um, without file. I need to move this here. I'm just con control X, it's cop uh, cut, and then control V, which is copy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write name. Uh, H is my next argument, and L for level. Okay, so NHL, National Hockey League. <laughs> all right, so uh, we have um, all of these being written out. So you're like, oh wow, this guy's weird. So save data is now going to be called to save data whenever we want. Cool, done. All right, so that kind of takes a load off there. Uh, whenever we want our data to be saved, all we simply have to do is just call the function. Let me prototype this function. Okay, semicolon on the end of it here. We have all of the stuff that's here. Uh, and then, yeah, where, where do we want this thing saved? How about right here? Save data. And we're going to send in first is a string, so player name. We want the name saved. Next is int h, so that's health. And then lastly is level. Level. Semicolon on the end, bam. Now this data is going to be saved into the file at will. So we can call save data anytime we want to save the game. That's great, that's cool. And we could do the same thing for input. Now I also want to throw this out uh, there with you as well. This is a data type. This can be passed in a function. Now, 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 I want you to uh, just hear this. I'm not saying that this is required for any assignment or anything like that. It's not required uh, that you do this for an assignment. I'm just, I want to show you all the possibilities that are out there. So you could put uh, a type um, of function that would return, I don't know why you would uh, for right now, you could have a function that returns of type if stream. Uh, example, and it could take of type if stream uh, x and you could do this you could do this this is a data type okay so i just wanted to show you that you can write a function with any return of any data type or any argument of any data type even if they are advanced 
uh, I mean, this this is no different from anything you've learned up to this point uh, because you've done this with string. And string is the exact same thing. They're lighting up the same color. They are abstract data types. Okay, So you can do that. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Keep that in the back of your mind. All right. So I think I've kind of shown you a little bit uh, of stuff to go off of. I showed you how to create a file and get that into Visual Studio. I showed you how to write to the file, how to read in from the file. Um, now start to take these pieces and connect them together. See if you can hammer out um, a, a real quick assignment that will allow you to combine all of this stuff together. Something a little bit more well structured than this and take some time to see if you can figure it out. All right, hopefully that helped, and uh, if you have any questions, let me know.